Hello, and how are you doing? This is uh, your boy, friend of Germany. Okay? And you're doing good, I suppose. Okay? We get, we get us in and we get this Z. Huh? Alles klar? Alles good? Huh? Mein Name ist Tambo Ngambi und ich bin die Freund von Fan von Deutschland. <laughs> the artist. Hey, if you haven't uh, listened to my album, I suggest you click on the link below and go check it out on Apple Music or you can Google it, search it on Spotify. All right? I'm a trans artist, okay? And of course, I do other things too. But you know what? I rock. I got some trans gimmicks. So check it out, okay? I got some heat tracks out there for you to check out. Now, I wanna say something about um, the differences between Bulgaria and Zambia. Or should I say the difference between Bulgarians and Zambians? What is the difference? There's gotta be a difference somewhere. Because uh, I lived in Bulgaria for some time. So I know something about the world. <laughs> Alright. So if you want to talk about Bulgaria, let me tell you something about Bulgaria. Bulgaria, in Bulgaria they don't use, um, Bulgarians don't use Latin letters. No. There's no Latin writing there. Everything is in Cyrillic. Cyrillic is what some people call Russian, okay? But it's not Russian because it wasn't created by Russians. Cyrillic was actually created by Italians. <laughs> I know somebody's gonna be like, hey, that was created by Russian. No, Italians created Cyrillic, not Russians. Okay, yeah. Now, um, you have to learn Cyrillic if you want to go visit Bulgaria because every writing that you're going to come across names of streets, names of roads is going to be in Cyrillic it's in Cyrillic so if you can't read Cyrillic you're going to just lose your way unless you are on the highway on the highway there's Latin as well as Cyrillic but if you're just around the city you're not going to find Latin writing everything is, is in Cyrillic Okay, yeah, um, the other difference between Zambians and Bulgarians is the way we examine our students, the way we examine our students in school. In Zambia, you sit for an exam, <laughs> it's marked out of 100, okay? If there was an assignment, it's still an exam and it's going to be marked as an exam out of 100, okay? Then they'll, they'll kind of like, you know, equate it by including in that uh, assignment and stuff like that okay but the point I want to raise here is that in Bulgaria that's not how they examine in Bulgaria when you go to sit for an exam you sit in an exam you sit for an exam just the same way that you sit for an exam in Zambia but it's marked out of six meaning you can have 50 questions but they all are gonna run round up to six okay Meaning the pass mark is three. <laughs> Troika. Eh? And if you get a two, a dvoika. It means you're failed. Okay. So this means that if you get a troika, you're safe. You don't have to recede for that exam. You see what I mean? Yeah. Now, um, there's something interesting that I noticed in Bulgaria. Is that when we, when you write an exam, and you have failed the teacher is just not gonna fail you the teacher is gonna call you and interview you <laughs> you know what I mean he's gonna ask you and gauge your understanding of that particular subject that you were examined in now if, should you find that you actually know the subject should you find that you know something you're not completely ignorant 
<laughs> he's gonna upgrade you from a dvoika to a troika okay now what happens is when you finish writing your exam you are asked to go out when you go out you don't go home you wait until after the teacher marks your papers if it's a lot of work okay the teacher is gonna mark the papers and still call each one of you so your results are just not going to be displayed on a knowledge board that this is how everyone scored no 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 you have to undergo an interview before your results are confirmed so if you got a shesitsa a six okay it means that you got everything right the teachers still gonna ask you questions to find out whether you really deserve to get a shesitsa a six out of six should you find that you actually were just coping <laughs> the exam because you don't know anything you'll be downgraded to a dvoika too you failed and you'll be like hey i i got everything right why have i failed the exam because you are coping that's why you have failed the exam and the teacher proved it that you don't have any knowledge whatsoever about the subject see the difference yeah and uh another interesting thing eh? <laughs> about uh, the Bulgarian exam is that a teacher will not give you a zero you see what I mean you went for an exam and you sat in the exam you cannot get a zero you get a zero if you did not show up as long as you did attempt the minimum you can get is a two out of six that shows some respect because it means you're not an imbecile you know what I'm saying it shows respect that you're not an imbecile but here in Zambia if you sit for an exam and you get everything wrong you're an imbecile you get zero you know what I mean so in Bulgaria there is no such a thing as an imbecile everybody is given credit all right because they can think you get what I'm saying yeah now uh, that's uh, the exam side but let me go to other things the other difference between Zambians and Bulgarians is that in Zambia there is a lot of um, gender separation you get what I mean there's a lot of gender separation I have not come across any school college or whatsoever you see what I'm saying learning institution where dormitories are unisex you know what I mean is rooms are unisex you get what I mean in, ba in Bulgaria all the colleges and universities that I visited I never saw anywhere where it was ladies only or gentlemen only no it was just one dormitory and this room to be ladies the other room to be gentlemen the other room to be ladies the other room to be gentlemen it's all mixed okay and I suppose the reason is because they make sure that from college level going up rooms are self-contained you see what I mean whereas here in Zambia there's this thing of doing cheap 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 buildings you get, get what I'm saying all learning institutions are made their buildings are so cheaply constructed and because they are so cheaply constructed they have communal you know washrooms communal this communal that you get what i'm saying but not in bulgaria in bulgaria it's not like that there is no cheap 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 construction no everything is done the right way you get what i'm saying you are in college you get a self-contained room you get what i'm saying you are in university you get a self-contained room okay that's and that's the way it should be you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, uh, um, what other things can I talk about? <laughs> yeah. Uh, regarding gender uh, separation, you can find that in Bulgaria, ladies can do any job. <laughs> you gonna find ladies sweeping the streets early in the morning. You know, ladies driving trucks. Is very common you know in Zambia it's kind of like rare to see a lady who can drive a truck you know 
or a lady doing like serious manual labor it's it's rare if not impossible okay ladies are changing you know in this country they were kind of put in their place but now they are coming out you know because as long as you're a human being you have, you have gifts you've got talents and you deserve to showcase your talents and gifts you get what i mean and i think that like the current government of zambia has really pushed gender equality you know they've done a great job they've done a very good job at making women take up bigger roles you know and making other women see that yes it's possible for them too to take up a bigger role okay yeah uh, the other thing i have no i noticed about bulgarians you know versus zambians is that zambians when they have a lot of food a lot of food they just let it rot it goes to waste and they throw it away you get what i mean yeah but bulgarians are not like that bulgarians when they have a lot of food like they harvest a lot of food they 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 put them in what do you call it uh some of these things are difficult to translate okay in bulgaria they call it compote they make compote okay what compote is they take some glass jars and they they have this fluid liquid thing where they put the vegetables or they put the the fruits to preserve them they can stay in there for a year even two probably even more so when they're in the season when those fruits are rare all they do is to just pull out those jars you see what i mean and they'll have fresh fruits like that but in zambia it's not like that in zambia in the rainy season you find zambia has too many mangoes for zambians to consume and what happens is zambians just take them into the skip throw them away you know when they could actually do something with them preserve them if they don't want to eat them then sell them to other countries you get what i'm saying it's it's actually a very major difference i noticed you get what i'm saying yeah ah an important topic here food in zambia the staple food is maize uh crushed maize yeah crushed maize is the staple food it's like almost every home in zambia eats crushed maize okay but in bulgaria the staple food is bread <laughs> there's no here you have there's no life all right here you have is, is bread okay in zambia if there's no bread people don't give it a damn you know what i mean but if there is no maize uh, people riot <laughs> you get what i mean yeah so you're gonna find that zambians have kind of grown expertise at preservation of maize you get what i mean not preservation of mangoes or other fruits or anything else just maize they know how to keep maize okay yeah because that's what they eat mostly with with other stuff okay all right now um bulgarians are very particular about um having something else apart from a main meal you know in in zambia it's kind of like no one thinks about having something else apart from the main meal every time zambians call you for lunch or supper there's just gonna be the meal there's not gonna be anything like a starter or a finisher no but in bulgaria even the poor is poor okay you're gonna find that they're gonna cut some um some what do you call them uh cucumbers and put them in sour milk and eat that before they go to the rice with uh i don't know um uh you know sometimes when you think in a particular language you want to translate to english you, you have to like think a little bit okay uh with pork meat yeah yeah with pork meat they call it sven <laughs> yeah we're used to it okay it's really good <laughs> oh that's Deutsch. okay now um you're gonna find that the you're gonna find that the the bulgarians they 
they just have it that you know they've got to eat they've got to eat something you know like a pre-meal before the meal whether you are in the college a public place it's like that and in Bulgaria there are places called stolas stolas are places where the poorest of the poor can go and get food the food is really really cheap like really cheap okay and people can pre-buy that food by buying what they call coupons when they pre-buy the coupons each time they want to eat a meal they just present a coupon and eat so at the end of a month someone can just buy a bunch of coupons like that and all you do is every time when it's lunch hour you just present one of them and and you are given food okay at the public store okay it's kind of like a cafeteria okay but it's a public cafeteria they call it a store okay hey i think that's those are the major things i i notice major differences i notice between bulgaria and zambia okay um, um oh yeah the other thing is that the main uh, bulgarians are christians just like us here in zambia except that they are orthodox christians whereas in zambia we are mainly catholic okay mainly catholic and of late there's been a lot of pentecostal thing you know kicking up all right but the major 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 part of zambia is catholic okay pentecostal is kind of like you know getting a very big uh they're getting very big all right but they are still pretty much new okay yeah there's been pentecostal you know like united church reform church but i think since 1993 one okay i was not in zambia at that time so I, I can't i don't really know somewhere there okay when the first government fell and the second government took over that's when a lot of private churches kind of like mushroomed before that it was just international pentecostal churches which were around and of course catholic has been the dominant um, church uh, up to today okay so that's what i gotta say that is all i have to say about what i think now if you haven't subscribed to my channel hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you get notified each time i i have something new for you all right so i'm out peace don't forget to click on the link and check out my music if you are a subscriber of Spotify, Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon Music, hey, add my songs to your playlist. Okay, you can find me, Friend of Germany. I've got two albums, Do It For Love and View Comment to the Dance, to the Trance Floor. View Comment to the Trance Floor. As Global Fast Dancer, I have View Comment to the Dance Floor. All right, that's a different album altogether. Okay, so check me out. All right, peace. Bye.